where in chapter one, the book takes place in the days of King Arhaxerxes, also known as King Xerxes. His grandfather was King Cyrus the Great. First one, King Xerxes reigned from India to Ethiopia, over 127 provinces. This is a powerful king. He rules a very vast empire. He is the supreme ruler of the world at the time. Verse three, he hosts a banquet or a feast for all the nobles, for all the princes of his province. This banquet is really to display his own glory, and we can pick up on that in verse 4. And he displayed the riches of his royal glory and the splendor of his great majesty for many days, 180 days he's showing off. When that feast was over, another festival began, this time a week-long banquet for his city, for all the people in Susa. Now, Susa is the capital of Persia. Notice in verse 6, the writer draws you into the party's grandeur. Fine white and violet linen, silver and marble columns, couches of gold and silver. This palace was designed to stun, to take your breath away, to leave you in no doubt about the wealth of the king. And in verse 7, drinks served in golden vessels. So wine's flowing freely. And in verse 8, there's only one rule, and that is to drink as you please. Verses 10 and 11, on the last day of the party, the king's drink drinking a little too much, he's drunk and he calls for his wife. He says, bring Queen Vashti before the king with her royal crown. He wants to show her off to the people because she's beautiful. Notice that he is treating her like another one of his elaborate things. He's just wanting to show her off like a trophy wife. This is all about him. He has limitless power, limitless riches, the most beautiful wife, and she'll come at his command. Verse 12, but Vashti refused to come at the king's command, delivered by the eunuchs. Then the king became very angry and his wrath burned within him. He controls everything down to how the people drink at his party, but he has no control and he loses it. He has the power, the prestige, the influence, the money, but his marriage is a sham. This gives us insight of what's really happening behind closed doors. He's really empty and now embarrassed in front of his guests. His wife refuses to come. And in verse 13, this great powerful king cannot control his temper tantrum. So he summons wise men to come up with a solution to this problem. And they decide that Vashti must go. She's a terrible example to the women of Persia, they say. And she is to never again be in the king's presence. In his drunken anger, he mandates that men should be masters of their home. And this is just laughable. A man cannot demand or force respect from his wife and that's what he is trying to mandate leadership in the home calls for the husband to love his wife and wives to respect their husbands but we can tell by reading the text that he isn't devoted to her he isn't loving her or giving himself up for her in servant leadership he wants to show her off to make himself look good she is his tool his plaything and a wife is not your property treat her with respect love her honor her, give her a reason to treat you the same. In the New Testament, Paul shows that submission is not one-sided, but a reciprocal relationship. A husband ought to devote himself to his wife's good. I'm actually going to read the verse, Ephesians 5 verse 33. Nevertheless, each individual among you also is to love his own wife even as himself and the wife must see to it that she respects her husband. Reading this chapter we learn that the king's pursuit of wealth, prestige, and power left him empty and foolish. That's something you can't respect. He cared more about his possessions than he cared about loving his wife. Mm -hmm.